Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the major update released by Burp Suite recently uh, for the browser-based crawling. Uh, so uh, I guess a few releases ago they uh, released the embedded browser uh, by the Burp Suite. So rather than like you know uh, maybe configuring your own browser like Chrome, Safari, or Firefox, now you can use the embedded browser which is in the Burp itself. To perform the testing, uh, so let me uh, show you, like you know, how that embedded browser works. If you haven't got a chance to update the burp yet, and then we'll talk about what this major feature uh, released like a couple of weeks ago uh, for the browser-based crawling. That's going to be a huge uh, change uh, for the burp, I guess, uh, for the past 10 or 12 years. So that's what it is. Uh, let me switch to burp now. So uh, as we can see here, uh, this does not look like a familiar screen if you haven't updated the recent pop screen. Uh, the proxy uh, supposed to be uh, like you know you can just use your own browser. You configure maybe using proxy proxy or go to the settings and configure the proxy. Now rather than doing that, it's simple. You just one click and then you have all the configuration done. SSL you don't have to deal with that installing the CA certificates, all that nonsense is gone now. You can just use the built-in browser. So once you click on this one, it's going to open up uh, this browser, as you can see, and it's going to start capturing the request. Now let me intercept off. And for example, if I say something like google.com, let me intercept on and enter. So as you can see, now my request is being captured. Uh, we got the response, and here uh, I can load up the Google. Uh, even though it's an HTTPS site, I don't have to install any certificate or anything. It just works simple, right? So this is the major feature change. Now, this is not only going to be used uh, for the uh, like you know manual testing perspective, but the major update uh, I'm interested in talking to is about the crawling feature which is like you know here when you go to the dashboard um, now you have like you know pa passive crawl from proxy so all the traffic which is in scope goes to the passive crawler and then of course you also have live audit uh, from the proxy so audit means uh, in the bulk terminology it's a scanning so Essentially, any uh, any particular request you want to scan, it's easy. We have seen in the past, you just click on that, you right-click, and then do an active scan on that one. You create the scan, and we have covered this video in the past, like how to use this uh, new feature on the audit or the scanning feature, right? So here, the, the main difference or main changes, now uh, going forward, Burp is going to use the browser rather than the uh, uh, this old, I guess, JavaScript. Uh, I wouldn't say JavaScript, but like you know, traditional spidering, like going through the URL, parsing it, go to the next URL, and st stuff like that. And we'll see what Burp was doing and how it has improved since then, and and what is the the uh, latest feature brings to the uh, like you know for the community. So uh, it's gonna it's using the Chromium uh, browser. Uh, we just saw the browser, which is a Chromium browser, and it's an open source browser project that aims to build a safer, faster, and more stable way for all the internet users to experience the web. So that's an open source web; anyone can use it. Uh, I have put the link in the description of the Chromium browser if you want to uh, get more information. But I have seen several people uh, doing the using the Chromium browser for the crawling or for any test projects which uh, you don't need to use like you know uh, Firefox or, or uh, Chrome. Of course you can also make the edits because since it's an open source so you can make the pull request. Uh, it's pretty that simple. So that's the basics. Now uh, let's see uh, what the approach uh, like you know that Burp has been taking. I guess when the Burp got released back in uh, 2004, 5, 6, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. Uh, from the start, how it was doing is it was going to the URL. It will pass the response, and as soon as it receives the additional URL in the response, it will parse 
that request, right? So that was pretty simple. It will start with a main link, let's say index.html. Now it from the index.html, it found products1.html, so it clicked there. Now it found uh, maybe payment.html, so now it's going that page. Right, so this was their uh, initial approach, uh, but there were like you know that worked for many years, but not with the modern apps. And the main challenges that I see with this approach is uh, there is no way Burp can maintain the application state. So, for example, if uh, this uh, you are of course all of these URLs are authenticated, right? And it's not using the same authentication scheme, or let's say it's using the different CSRF tokens on each function. There is no way because this, like you now, Burp when, when Burp is exploring, let's say this URL or the last node, it does not have any information of the state on the previous URLs. It's just doing it like you know as an independent request. Let's just put it that way. So it's very hard or difficult to maintain the application state. And of course, when you have a volatile URL, so for example, when you put some information in here, and based on that information, you get the next response, or you get the response. So every time you change your input, the response is going to be different. That way, Burp is not able to capable of handling all the responses or, or figure out all the all the URLs parsing, right? So that was there were a few uh, problems with this approach. Now the next approach that Burp came in uh, was go to the URL, parse the response, get the URL, and parse the response. So how this worked is rather than uh, going from one node to another and scanning those or parsing those independently, it would do like it will go to this URL, it will pass the response and get the URL, and then it will go back, go like from the main node, and then it will go back to the middle, uh, whatever the URL it got, and now whatever the URL it discovered again, it will go to that URL. So rather than like, you know, starting uh, considering this, if it has to, if Burp has to pass this one, it will not independently pass it. It will start from the scratch, go back, come here, and come back here. Of course, this going to take a lot of time, but it's worth it, right? Because now it can maintain the application state. It can handle the CSRF because if the token is changing on each request, then if it's starting from the very first node, then it can have the CSRF token. So that that becomes very easier. And also, uh, it can manage the volatile URLs much better if the same URL behaves differently based on the different circumstances. But there is still one limitation here, and it's the limitation is it does not handle JavaScript very well. Uh, so let's take a look at the next one, and then I'll explain what the issue is. So here, with the browser-based crawling, it can uh, handle JavaScript pretty well. So uh, when I say JavaScript, uh, because, uh, for example, uh, there are modern applications, like a single-page application, right, where each page would be dynamically loading or, or, or it ma the response or, or the UI of the uh, request would be different based on the JavaScript uh, and the JavaScript uh, input. So there is no way with the previous approach uh, it can actually pass the JavaScript. Now since we are they are using browser, it will pretty much it can pretty much parse or spider anything which you can do with the browser uh, or how the normal user would use it so that's why it's going to be uh, uh, like you know very useful as even even like you know uh, up till now i would never rely on the burp crawling because i would just crawl by myself and i have pretty much evidence that i would find more urls and more uh, 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 I guess endpoints rather than having Burp do this auto spidering because it's not able to handle the uh, modern applications, right? Uh, so if we see the example, so uh, seems some sites have dynamic UI as I said, like based on the JS and not raw HTML, uh, and Burp will see the script as we can see. So when the Burp starts here. 
it reaches here it will see the script it will execute it build the ui and it will call the ui which was built based on this uh, script right so uh, this is much better because this is not something you can achieve uh, with the previous uh, or traditional approach now then another example you could have is uh, many times uh, the ui is built based on the uh, event handler like if you have used uh, uh, like on click or on mouse over or something uh, uh, so now it it's going to modify the ui as needed and handle such situation easily now if you have used the old scanning or crawling for your app, it is good time to probably redo it using this uh, new feature. And probably you would find some interesting uh, endpoints and URLs uh, for the scanning or maybe for exploitation, which you have not seen in the previously. And this is also going to be useful for many bug bounders because if they would just rely on the uh, burp crawling and uh, to discover or gather the information, uh, they might not have 100% information, but now using this feature, they will get some additional info and you might be able to find some new uh, vulnerabilities. Of course, I'm gonna do the same thing. So uh, that's a that's a good thing. And I'm, I'm sure like many other uh, uh, traditional uh, uh, scanners like IPM App Scan and uh, uh, Rapid7, um, they are they have all already upgraded those tools with the uh, crawling for using the browser base rather than traditional approach so i have seen uh, most of those like you know tools already upgrading themselves so uh, that's great that burp is also catching up now uh, the only uh, like you know disadvantage that i see is the more system load um, because of course now you have the uh, browser which is running uh, and of course uh, like you know it's going to take some of your system resources but i guess it's worth it uh, and that's why burp recommends that you should have at least 8 gigs of ram and two cpu cores uh, when you do make the upgrade uh, the only other uh, disadvantage that i see or the security risk rather than disadvantage i would say is the security risk what if the Chromium version that the Burp is using, it's vulnerable, right? Uh, and I have seen that in the past, like many old crawler are using the older version of Chromium, which has some significant risk, uh, security risk. So, but uh, in this case, we you cannot just rely on the Burp, but uh, of course, uh, you can always check if Burp is using the latest browser version. And they have made sure, uh, and of course, they are in the security space, so they know the importance of the patches. So I'm sure they will be coming up with the updates as as and when Chromium there is, there is a security risk arise for the uh, latest Chromium version. There is also an option for you if you if you are not feeling comfortable using this browser, you can always disable that uh, from the options settings. So that's always there. Uh, th that's about it. I guess I wanted to discuss about uh, this uh, new feature that Burp has came up with, and I'm, I, I'm sure like uh, you would all be eager to use it. So let me know or share the experience, how you like it, and uh, if you are able to discover new URLs using this uh, feature or not. And if you have any experience using it already, uh, please share with the community. It will help us, uh, everyone, and and that's how like you know we can keep growing our knowledge so that's it from uh, this video uh, thank you for your time uh, and uh, please hit the like button if you enjoy this video uh, of course follow the facebook page where we post some interesting articles videos updates everything and i'll see you guys next monday bye